to get to all this, right? You only get to the... All right, so there are eight temperatures that you need to memorize. These four in Celsius and Fahrenheit. So just um, don't look at, down at your paper for a minute. Body temperature. Raise your hand if you could tell me in Fahrenheit. Peter? 98.6 Celsius. Kimberly? 37 degrees Celsius. Okay. Um, room temperature, we're going to say, Habib? 54 to 68. Yeah, we're going to call it like 68 degrees Fahrenheit. What about, are we going to get to that one? No. What about Celsius? So this one you probably don't know. Yeah, it's 20 degrees. The freezing point of water, I'm sure everyone knows both of these. Now, what is it in Fahrenheit? Oh, 32 degrees. Yeah. Somebody else, how about Celsius? Celsius is also called centigrade, if you hear that word. Mm -hmm. Kayla? Zero degrees. Zero degrees. I was going to ask, um, is there any like trick to finding out how to control? Like, if you don't remember the Celsius, but you remember Fahrenheit? Um, <coughs> Not really. There's a formula you can use. You know, five ninths Fahrenheit um, plus 32. So there's two formulas you can use to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit and vice versa. When you have the scale side by side, sometimes you use them, you know, you follow across to see what it is. Sometimes on your calculator, you may have a bucket. Um, but yeah, there's different ways you can estimate it. How about boiling point of water in Fahrenheit? This is one I think probably a lot of people may not know. Did you talk about home repairs? No? Brandon, what is that? Yes, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. What about in Celsius, somebody else, Sophia? 100 degrees. All right. Kelvin is, Kelvin is another temperature scale. Um, so, let me explain, not really, but Kelvin is a temperature scale. It's used sort of in science and physics and so on. And if you think about when we cool down material, what happens to the speed of the molecule? Yes. So if you logically think about it, if you cool something down enough, what eventually happens? The molecules stop moving. And there's a name for that. Does anyone know the term? What is it? Absolute zero. Called absolute zero. Absolute zero is a temperature at which theoretically molecules cease moving. Okay? And that's what zero degrees Kelvin is. That's called absolute zero. It's basically the coldest anything could possibly be because the molecules stop moving. However, scientists have never cooled anything to absolute zero. They're unable to do that. Um, they just can't get that. They can get within, you know, hundreds or thousands of a degree, but never quite to absolute zero. Uh, all right. So. There is a difference between heat and temperature, and we need to understand this distinction. Temperature is, you could think about it as the average speed of the molecules in a substance. The average speed that the molecules are vibrating is the temperature. Oh, you need to, so yours says, when you measure temperature, you're measuring the average speed of the molecules. The average my whole line of my going to hold it here. No, don't even hit your eyes. Right there. Just an eye. Put the cat right there. No, cat's a point. Stop, read me so much. 
<laughs> All right, anyway. Well, it's like playing with a cat. Um, heat is the total amount of movement in the whole matter. So you could think about temperature is sort of the average of speed of the molecules. Heat is the overall total. And so if I think about these, these two um, beakers of water are both room temperature. So which, though, has a greater amount of heat? The close? The larger one. Yeah, the larger one. They have the same average speed of molecules, but because there's so many more molecules, this one has greater heat. Heat depends on two things, how fast the molecules are moving and how many molecules there are. You know, if I said I, there's two rooms of students, in, in one room, the average amount of money in a student's pocket is 10 cents. In the other room, the average amount of money in a student's pocket is $1. You could have all the money from the entire room of one of those rooms. Which one would you pick? $1, depending on the size. What information do you need to make the best decision. How many students? Yes, how many students? Because if there's a hundred students in the ten cent room and only five students in the one dollar room, which one would you want? But how many did you say are? Yeah, you'd want the ten cent room because that's ten dollars. Even though there's less average money per person, because there's more people, there's a greater total amount of money. Saying that that's sort of analogous to this heat and temperature. Temperature is the average, but heat's the total. So technically, temperature is not energy, but it's a measurement of heat energy. Heat is the actual energy. Now, I don't have the next slide, but on your slide, you have three beakers. Uh, what? Yeah. I get it, oh, I, I get, get it. it. Ah, it's oh, yeah. funny joke. Uh, 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 it's Sesame Street. Sesame Street. It's Sesame Street. Muppets. It's Muppets. So you have two glass beakers on oh, your paper. Uh, which one? So they're both 40 degrees Celsius, which has more heat. The bigger one. The larger one, because there's more molecules. If I have this metal bar at 30 degrees Celsius, and I cut it into two pieces. Has the temperature changed? No. Oh, the temperature of each piece is still 30 degrees Celsius. But how does the heat compare in each section? Yeah, each one is half as much heat because it's half the size. So you have this picture of Mr. Arcuri going into the Perry Junior High pool. Um, even if it's very cold, is our pool cold here? Okay. Versus a small little thimble full of very, very warm water, which has. No. Yes, it is. You eat crickets. You eat crickets. You eat crickets. So, which has a higher temperature? The thimble full of water for Jimmy Cricket. But which has more heat? The giant pool of water. Even though it's very cold, it still has more heat because there's so many more molecules. No, they're not holes. They're uh, indentations. Um, All right. Um, yes, Peter. I have, a, I have a question for you about um, the beaker. Yes. Which one? Which of the three beakers it t takes the least amount of time to blow up? Probably the False. first one. Yeah. All right. Calories. So you learned about calories in health class. A calorie is what? When you look at a food package and it tells you it contains 100 calories, what information is that giving you? What is a calorie, sir? Not quite. It depends on how much fat, partially, but yeah, how much energy that food contains. When you eat that bag of potato chips, how much energy is it giving you? That's what the calories are. Calorie is a measurement, actually, of heat energy. And one calorie, the definition of a calorie, does anybody know what it is? Um, it's calorie. It's the amount of heat needed to 
raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. It's kind of neat. To one way you can figure out how much how many calories um, a food has is using a, a tool called the bomb calorimeter. A bomb calorimeter is basically a container in which you put your food substance and you burn it, you combust it. And also inside is a amount, a certain amount of water. And as the food you put in or the substance you put in burns, what happens to the water? It heats up. And by looking at the change in temperature, it'll tell you how much energy was contained in that substance that you burn. So you take a bag of chips and you burn them in this tool, temperature of the water will go up and it'll tell you how many calories were in those potatoes. Water until your chips get destroyed. No, it's in a separate container. Until your chips get destroyed. Yeah, Fran? You didn't burn one chip or a bunch of chips. They can do it either way. Yes, John? Um, you can buy them and make them sometimes like a thermometer and like a cup surrounded by a fireproof thing. <coughs> Um, so, <coughs> thanks, I mean, I <laughs> so, what is coldness? Can you put coldness into something? No. You put your water bottle, you're in a freezer because you're going to practice later on the day, so you put it in the freezer. Does a freezer put coldness into your water? No. What does it do? It takes away heat. Removes the heat. Because coldness is really not a thing. It's an absence of heat or a lack of heat. Heat always moves from hot, hotter object to a colder object. So when you put your water bottle in the freezer, the air in the freezer is colder. Your water bottle is warmer. So energy heat from your warmer water bottle goes into the air in the freezer. Okay, and the temperature of your water bottle drops in the temperature of the freezer increases, but then because of the uh, equipment, that removes the heat from the back. Do you ever feel like in the back of your refrigerator where the coils are? Um, yeah. How does it feel? There are no coils. There's like a, there are in the back if you click. No. Yeah, it's warm. You feel like warm air there. It's getting rid of that warm air that it's removing from all your foods in your freezer. Oh, that's where the heat's. Okay. Outside, yes. if you walk outside, it's like cold, just it's because the temperature of the air out there is, is low. So heat from your skin is going into the air, causing you to feel cold. We'll get that in the next slide. Hold on one sec. Now, if you combine water of different temperature or any substance, if I have 50 milliliters of 20 degrees Celsius water and 20 or um, 50 milliliters of 40 degrees Celsius water and combine them, what's the final temperature going to be? 20 degrees Celsius water oh. and 40 degrees Celsius water. Oh, it'd be 30, 30. Yeah, it'd be 30 degrees of 100 milliliters of water. That's right. Because they're equal amounts, the temperature would equalize exactly between the two. Oh. Peter? Um, oh, oh, um, since uh, heat is molecules vibrating with the doesn't um, sound make like, vibrate? Sound is. So if you were loud enough, could it like melt an object? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. So if you're holding two things, if you hold a, a hot mug of coffee in your hand, heat is traveling from this very hot mug into your hand, okay, causing it to feel warm. If you're holding an ice cube, your hand is warmer. Heat from your hand goes into the ice cube, and because you're losing heat, it feels cold. <laughs> All right, our last section is about heat transfer. There are three means which heat can be transferred um, from one place to another. Conduction, convection, and radiation. Now, conduction is when heat is passed from one molecule to another. Okay. So, um, it occurs in solids. And if you imagine, when you heat up molecules and um, 
if you have a spoon, you're stirring your soup that you're making, but you leave the spoon in the soup as it's heating up. This metal one or a yeah, metal spoon. In, in the, the part that's in the soup that's really hot, the molecules start moving faster. They bump into other molecules and they cause them to move faster, which bump into other molecules. And that spreads throughout the spoon until the end gets hot. That's conduction. It's caused by molecules bumping into each other. But it doesn't mean that a, a metal molecule from the spoon that's in the hot soup is like moving to the end of the spoon and making your hand hurt. It's that the molecules bump into each other. So some things are good conductors of heat. Mainly what? Metals. Metals. What are some objects that are poor conductors? Silicon. Okay. Plastics. Wood. Wood. Rubber. Rubber. Yeah, these are insulators. They don't conduct heat very well. If you um, so look at, feel your chair for a minute behind you. So there's the plastic part of the chair, feel that, and feel the metal part. Now, raise your hand if you could tell me how the temperature of these two compares. Caitlin? The plastic one is just like too warm in the Okay, is that correct? Yeah. No. No? Wrong? They're the same temperature. Oh, why? They're both at room temperature. So why do they feel different? That's the question. So why do they feel so different? If they're actually at the same temperature, I, when you touch them, they don't feel the same temperature. So what's the difference? Brandon? Yes. And so, when you touch the metal, which is a good conductor, what's happening to the heat? From where to where? From your hand into the metal of the chair. And because it's taking heat away more quickly, it feels colder. You touch the plastic, which is a better insulator. Less heat is being removed from your hand less quickly because it's not a good conductor, and so it feels warmer. What about the cold added cold? What's that? Yeah, the cold's already yeah. cold. Like it yeah. just because it hasn't been heated up by the side of your head resting against it. But wouldn't the heat transfer down to the bottom? No, because the feathers and stuff in there are good insulators. Oh. Yeah. But, so like if you put your hand up for a long time, would the like, heat go from the no, they would, you would continue to lose heat energy to the metal until, when does this stop? Well, now we're going to go where the temperatures are equal, and then it stops. All right, and so the chair part is a good insulation. You could, it conducts heat, you know. All right. So the key thing to remember is that in conduction, molecules don't move. When I heat up this little stick, it's not that um, molecules from this part are traveling to your hand making it hurt. It's that the molecules bump into each other. Okay? So again, tra keep traveling up the rod. Heat flows up in that direction. It's also why you shouldn't use metal rods when you are toasting marshmallows. You have a picture there of Mr. Arcuri toasting marshmallows, and he got burned one time because he's using a metal rod to toast marshmallows. What's that? Is that why people use your That is. That might help them use metal like sticks and they're like this on they're like that's what's on the But what's at the end? Plastic. Yes, little plastic handle. They're like stamped Wow, that's really awesome. <laughs> All right, second method of heat transfer is convection. This is a type of heat transfer you actually have molecules that do move from place to place transferring heat. Does anybody at your house bake and you have, you know you have a convection oven? It's a different type of oven? Uh, is that one that has it's one that has air circulating around it and it like cooks things more quickly. Um, versus a regular kind of oven that I have. Um, but anyway, 
So convection is transfer heat when molecules move because they got warmer and less dense and new molecules take their place. It happens, it requires moving molecules, so it happens in liquids and gases. Say that what happens like when you heat up water. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like, yep. Yeah. So if we have our little Mr. Fiery here, if he's heating up water in this part of this container, as the water heats up, what happens to it? Gets less dense and rises. Then it moves across. As it gets to the surface, it cools down. It sinks. Okay? And then new water molecules come in to take their place, and you have this thing we call a convection so it curve. Mixes itself. Yeah, it's this movement of, um, of water molecules up and down, and warming and cooling. And that's what happens how the water heats up. It forms this convection curve. Uh, it also forms a, a breeze along the sea, is because of convection curves. Thunderstorms are caused by convection currents when you have warm air that rises okay, and releases moisture. In this, uh, you see this heater works on convection? Same thing. The last one is radiation. Heat can also be just transferred not from molecule to molecule, but just through empty space, through electromagnetic radiation. So it needs no molecules to occur. Now that's how heat from the sun reaches us. It's not that like molecules from the sun are traveling through space to get to us here on Earth. That heat travels through radiation. Okay? The movement through um, electromagnetic energy moves very quickly at the speed of light. Okay? So when you feel the heat coming off of a fire, you can sort of feel it. That heat, that is radiation. Wait, is that, you're standing back on fire? Well, that's because of the rising, that's because of the convection. That's because the air is moving and rising, that's convection. But when you like step near the fire, you know, sometimes you have like back your chair up from the campfire because it's getting too hot, that's because of the, the heat that's arriving at you through radiation. Mm -hmm. Try it. All right, so if we think about this fire, here all three types of heat transfer are going on, okay? As warm air rises from the fire, and that's why you see the shimmery area, that's convection. When you have a metal rod in the fire, that's conduction. And when you feel just the heat radiating from the fire, that's radiation. So on your slide, you need to label these pictures from the diagram. 